There we go. What's up, everybody? This is Adrian here. Oh. Uh, I'm here with Dom and Andre. So uh, yeah, we're we're back after a long time, and as you can see, we have a new UI design or new interface or new whatever you want to call it, like this new layout, and we wanted to show it to you guys with this episode in which we're going to talk about a lot of things but first of all we want to say that we're happy that we're back finally after a long time we've been quite busy and well for the new subscribers which by the way we're so uh, we deeply appreciate you guys thank you for your support and everything um well we're concept artists artists illustrators designers we work in the entertainment industry and we're also coming up with our own projects, which you can check out at our links, which you're going to find in the description. And also, we recently made um, an Instagram account for Lightshare. So make sure you go check it out and follow us there, where we expect to kind of, you know, drop some snippets from our episodes here, or maybe, I don't know, drop some more information on challenges and stuff we might be considering doing in the future never know <laughs> but yeah um i just wanted to start by you know asking you guys how have you been yeah man Maybe it's been a crazy long time yeah but pretty good i think oh, like well. whenever we disappear <laughs> whenever we disappear it's because it's a lot of work happening so i think that's great like yeah despite the fact that we have to to space out these episodes a bit more mm -hmm. but yeah i think the downtime is good for all of us though and then reconning back after what like a month <laughs> absolutely so. dude tell me it about like it i've been taking a time off for <laughs> way too long now but it, it feels good you know at first, you know, because I had this problem of like, no, 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 I can't stop. I can't stop. You know, you have to be productive 24-7 and that's not the way to go. And it's then you realize, you. yeah, exactly. It's like you can't be running marathons every single day, right? Or if you do, there's only, <laughs> there's only, you can only go so far, right? So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm starting to learn how to take breaks and kind of relax, chill a little bit and just, you know, acknowledging how productive that is as well to just take a break every now and then otherwise it just leads you leads you to uh burning out and and just not liking what you do anymore which is what we don't want to right so um Feels like I yeah school. do you guys <laughs> do you guys work out as well do you take uh so, like no. do you have a, a a physical exercise routine and stuff because oh, i've been yeah, every day actually i mean i've been trying to get day, back into that as well day. Yeah, that's awesome. I actually like uh, I I've, I saw you getting like those elastic bands to train at home, right? Oh yeah, and yeah. I got I got myself some as well. You to, got some to, like, too? Oh yeah, like just to help because the weights are not enough here. I don't have mm -hmm. like that many, and to be honest with you, I'm trying to build a gym at home just because I don't want to rely on like local gyms as well. Yeah. yeah After yeah. all that happened last year, like. It was a constantly on and off and that mm -hmm. sucked for me you know so like oh I tell me about it so own. i signed up for a gym membership at a new gym that just opened up and i went there for five days and they closed <laughs> <laughs> and you had to pay like six months in advance just to the to thing is sure. that yeah that's the problem that like this gym was, was asking you for the first year in advance right so I looked at it as a as a, an advantage, actually. I was like, oh, well, that's cool because it's like cheaper this way and I don't have to worry anymore about paying the gym for a year, right? But then it closed. Anyway, they didn't charge for the months <laughs> that they were closed, but still, it's oh, like nice. you just started and then you have to stop all of a sudden. So I, yeah, I got yeah. those bands as well because I saw Dom showed us um, the ones he have and I'm like, damn, I got to get that, man. But I have enough with yeah, the it, thinner ones now at the beginning, you know, because <laughs> I'm I'm so out of shape right now, man. I, I swear, I got like I'm not. The two heaviest ones. I got the heaviest ones <laughs> as well, and I've tried that. If I do pull ups on that, I have I do no effort. You know, it's like, <laughs> what's the point anymore, <laughs> right? So yeah, but I I I'm starting to realize how cool they are, and they they're very creative, dude. Yeah. Like, I didn't know you could 
emulate so many exercises that you used to do with weights at the gym, like with dumbbells and barbells and stuff like that. That's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah. to be honest, like, if I could, I would have, like, a complete gym set of equipment at home. <laughs> That's not how things work, you know. I really like uh, working out, so maybe one day. Could but, be like, the, for now, those do the, the It could the be the other, the other business besides Lightshare, you know, like... Andrea's Dude, I will gym. Totally be a, like a Weightlifting partner. business. <laughs> yeah. I would love like, to do that. <laughs> concept and people art like gym. look at me yeah. and I'm skinny as fuck <laughs> in the videos. It's like, no way this dude lifts anything. <laughs> but well. No, nah, man. I think, I think it's it's really great, you know? Like, um, mm -hmm. and the kind of friendships, I'm not sure if you guys are too much into that and maybe like I'm talking too much because I'm excited about it, but the kind of friendships that you make at the gym, are oh, like for sure. bro friendships, you know? Yeah. <laughs> and that's yeah. awesome to motivate each other because you're kind of like always playing chicken with each other mm -hmm. and that kind of motivates you to yeah. scale up things, you know? and but not in a bad way you know like it's not like you're making fun of each other for no reason you're making yeah, fun yeah. of each other to motivate it and if someone needs help you're always helping so you have that positive um motivation kind of going on i think it's the same way that we do with art you know like it happens over there too and that's just great for like overall uh, feeling great about yourself and Taking, Man, taking I your mind some, out of work. Some people who would just put me to shame, you know, especially because I remember this this older lady that was in her like, I don't know, maybe her late 50s, 60s or something like that. And she was running those long races, you know, like 60 kilometers through the mountains and stuff. And you would see her. She's like so skinny. And I'm like, man, that's impressive. And that day when she revealed to me what she actually does... Because I was just taking it by, oh, look, this this lady is like a like just a healthy lady who likes to take care of her body and stuff, you know, just like this other man right there that is also in like his early 50s or something like that. They all run a lot, dude. They they're like athletes. They they and and yeah. it makes you feel like I'm not doing enough, you know, like man, I should really go out there and like I don't know what your experience is with running, but I hate it, right? And I used to um, kind of train a lot uh, of calisthenics like a few years ago and I remember I was combining it with a lot of running because it was I had a different mindset back then I would like to get back to that because I would put myself through the stuff that I don't like to do just to show to show myself to prove myself that if I don't find any excuse for the stuff that I hate to do then I have no excuse for not doing what I actually enjoy doing you know such as painting and having fun with my my actual passion, right? Adrian, if you got yourself through some stuff that you hate, there's no way you're making excuses for not doing what you actually love, right? So I, I would run uh, every single day almost, right? And then every time, like once a week, I think it was, we did this longer race where we would try to push ourselves to the limit like let's say let's see how long can we run this time right we would do that once a week i'm not sure if you guys had any routines like that but that was a nice time in my life where i felt really really good like physically yeah i was never into running but i was like I'm, i still am you guys know me i'm still am, like very strict about routines and especially like working out and eating Mm -hmm. So like yeah I I I dropped out out of that like last year with the whole pandemic stuff and I went to some like very dark period of time there and to be honest one of the best things to get out of the this kind of slum and this kind of like shitty place mind place you know is to to get back home like he I see them as healthy routines because like it's exercise and that kind of thing. But maybe like for somebody else, it's, I don't know, um, doing some reading or some sort of hobby that helps lift you, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I think it's interesting that like- You mean you to see free your as, mind in a way? Yeah. And, and also to show you like, here, uh, you can do this very well, you know? 
So maybe you're not worthless after all. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, Ever absolutely. since I started watching Goggins, man. Oh, bro. I'm super motivated this week. Don't get me started <laughs> really? on that guy. <laughs> No, that guy, it's completely okay. the opposite effect on me. Like, I feel shitty because that guy is so weird. Really? <laughs> like, Man, I don't know. I always get the chills when I listen to him. Like, I like so the rough way he has to present his his thoughts, you know. And I he already told you about, guys. Yeah. What was it? He, he says something about, like, to find true fulfillment or happiness, you have to, like achieve your goals he said in like one talk or something that if you get over that hump or that struggle and you achieve like what you want to achieve then you'll feel that sense of fulfillment or yeah i only remember the last words of that sentence which was if you can make it through on the other side there's greatness right like, if you can get through that pain and that suffering and that dark thing you're going through, then on the other side of that, that's what you want. You know, it's waiting for you right on the other side. Yeah. So, and, and it's so true, you know, most of the time. It's, it's really true. This uh, nightmare vibe is when you, you make it through that and what you expected is not there right on the other side yeah. <laughs> but that's actually when you're actually still in you haven't made it out yet it's just you know you remember the meme with the guys like uh, mining diamonds and stuff and they give up like right at the end where they're <laughs> right like the inches end, away yeah. from the back. <laughs> yeah exactly so you, you just a little more you know and, and you're you're just right there but yeah man i, I already told you guys like i remember uh, first time I saw Goggins was on this uh, YouTube channel that was back then called Impact Theory. And the host is called Tom Bilyeu or something. <laughs> I've never pronounced his name loud, oh, so yeah. I don't know. Yeah. And um, this was 2017. So, bro, that time, at that time in my life, I had a lot of time to think because I was um, like living far away from my family, from my friends, from everything. And... Yeah, I just had a lot of time to spend with myself. I had no internet, you know, so I, I was just going into my mind every single day, kind of thinking of, of everything, like trying to understand myself, why I behave the way I behave, why I think the way I think and all that stuff. So a lot of self-reflecting was taking place. And with this, listening to this guy just helped me a lot, you know, to understand and, and go through any obstacle that I was, uh, you know, going into, you know, that I was going through at that time. And I was so happy to see him slowly coming out on social media because he was nowhere, right? Like his story was booming at that time. And now he's like everywhere. He has an Instagram account and he posts videos of how he trains and stuff. And by the way, most of the time, that's so motivating for me to, to listen to, you know. There is a time where you have enough of something that you like a lot, right? So there's a lot of time... Do you guys remember the, the typical motivational videos from 2013, 12, you know, those years, remember, on YouTube? Yeah. Always the same music, always the same words, always the same speeches, right? At the beginning, is like really motivating and it's, it's like it gets you going. That's, that, that was the kind of stuff that I was listening to when I was running and all that stuff back then. But then it gets to a point where it's like, yeah, I already had enough of that. So you have to quiet down all that noise around you you know that's when you need to spend time absorbing all the information that you've got same thing i would say applies to learning anything you know like watching tutorials every single day all the time like new tutorials new tutorials and never really sitting down to kind of mm, how should i say like like process that information yeah. yeah apply that it's, information exactly it's not gonna help you in any way right <clears throat> just like that video that you guys sent me about Veritasium, remember that that video from a few oh, yeah. days ago? You're not a visual learner, they say, right? Well, maybe you are, but you you can only memorize as many things, right? But again, that actually um, makes me want to ask, like, how do you guys approach tutorials and like video lessons and that kind of thing? I'm the worst guy to ask that question. <laughs> <laughs> I okay, watch. I just, <laughs> I just pick what 
is important to me. Like I might not use the whole tutorial, but maybe like bits and pieces are useful for what I'm doing at the moment. And then I apply that knowledge to the work that I do. And then I just never watch it again. <laughs> That's it. Nice. That's yeah, interesting. Yeah. yeah, it's because I've been getting like uh, some classes and some tutorials, right? And well, the way that I tend to approach it is like I watch it once and I follow it if it's a tutorial. And then like if it's a, a lesson, I just like take notes on that first watch. And mm -hmm. then like on that tutorial, I follow it like step by step and I create basically the exact same thing that the person is creating. Mm -hmm. And then like again, I watch it once again, trying to create my own thing with that. Right. And sometimes that works, sometimes it doesn't. And whenever I do that, like the thing that I created for my own doesn't look as good as the the one that the like guy who's given the lesson created. But I think it carries over towards the next pieces a lot better, you know. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, I was wondering like how people tend to approach those because my way it's like very very slow, and oh, I know some way. people that like watch classes all day, you know. So it's like. Yeah. I don't know how they go through so many tutorials in such a short period of time. I mean, I, I did the, the donut tutorial in Blender uh, a couple of years ago and I managed to pull it through. So yeah, th there's that. And then there's also like, you know, uh, I have a lot of books that I bought there. It's, it's usually the, the art of type of books, you know, the art of Star Wars, the art of this video game or whatever. And that's really inspiring to look at. But I feel like when you, when you get something that didn't take much effort on your side, it's like you don't value it that much, right? So let me explain. I got those books at a time in my life where I was doing very well financially. So I, I would not hesitate to buy any of them, especially because I was in the beginning stages of my career. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, inspiration, let it in, let it in, you know, come on. And I got all those books and it somehow builds this mindset of like the more I, I have, the more I possess, the more material of that kind I, I possess, the richer I become in knowledge, right, about it. But so, you know, I would get those books and just, you know, look through them and be like, oh my God, so this is how they do it. Look at this design, oh man, this is so cool. And then you close it, you put it in the shelf and you kind of forget about it, you know, because then there's another book that you can get and you do the same. And of course that inspires you at a certain point, but I don't think that's the right way to approach this. You know, I like the, um, the, the, the moment where you break those designs down and apply them to <coughs> your own stuff somehow right same thing with tutorials this is what dom just said right he watches exactly what he needs yeah. he takes what he needs from from all that content that's how everything should be mm -hmm. and i just said the the example about the books but it can also be applied to i don't know online courses or just separated tutorials or uh, anything so um yeah it i think i think it depends on what your goal is right in my case, maybe I was like a little bit all over the place, like, oh yeah, 3D, oh yeah, anatomy, oh, and this too, and this too, you know? And if you don't focus on something, I find it pretty hard to, yeah, to just make progress in that. Mm -hmm. it, it, you, may, you may be able to do it, but it's gonna be very slow, you know, because if you tackle so many things at, at once, it's gonna take a long time <laughs> to make any progress. I, I kind of stopped buying those kind of books, you know? Like yeah, those me art of books. Only if I have like a very good reason to do so. So let's say like yeah. um, there's a designer that I really like mm -hmm. that like I want to see his artwork and then like yeah. I go in and I actually like sit for like a couple of hours staring at like one piece, taking notes and like analyzing that because I really yeah. like design, you know? So like to me, the technique that they use is not as like uh, compelling to see, you know, mm -hmm. like I don't get as much off of that. But as an example, um, I think it's Christian Grzynski, his name. I might be butchering his name like completely, you know. <laughs> but he released a book uh, recently called uh, something like Vehicles from Another World or 
something like that, mm -hmm. right? Let me mm -hmm. find it. And oh, it's called Explorer. Futuristic vehicles for uncharted lands. It's like a really great book, you know. And the, that guy is an amazing designer. So like, I took I don't know maybe a month to read through the book. <laughs> Like, it's mostly just images, you know, but like mm -hmm. each design has a, a lot of pages and I trace over the the lines, you know, oh. to see like what <laughs> was this guy made it? and <laughs> where. Yeah, yeah. And that's honestly like great if you want to. I find that like way better than when I was starting out and I was buying like 10 books a month and like just flipping through them. Yeah, because you're like so attention. hungry for that new knowledge, you know, about design and art and stuff. I remember like reading through this. Yeah, but yeah. it's like you're so excited about it as well. And that's, I find that beautiful actually, because you're like a little kid all over the place. Like, I want to learn more. I want to know more about this. And yeah. I remember I was reading through this book called A Big Bag Big Bad World of Concept Art. And I forget the name of the author, but you guys know the book, right? So to yeah, me, yeah, I that, do own that book. I forgot the name of the. Yeah, yeah, I think it's a it's a horizontal format, and man, I, that was so. Uh, it had a lot of value to me, you know, because I was like, I really wanted to learn, especially in the beginning. You're so interested in this difference between concept art and illustration, you know, and it, stuff mm -hmm. like that. You know what I mean? And you want to know everything behind the scenes how they do that st that thing how, to, how they how they do that stuff and then i remember the one that really was very useful to me was the one uh from um oh james gurney color and light you know i read that book and then i realized i was like <laughs> i don't know if i i was like actively and passively applying what i learned from the book because i was like studying you know with no cameras no nothing just my bare eyes just staring at you know the environment just trying to see if i can pick up the information that i got from the book and see if i can understand what i what i was learning from the book right and then subconsciously you you end up applying that to your own paintings to your own, to your own work and i just realized it's weird. anything from that book. <laughs> yeah man it's, yeah, it's I watched, so cool i watched i think i mentioned this in the other podcast but yeah i watched the med eldori's color tutorial on youtube and I learned color just from that video alone. <laughs> like, I didn't even need the color and light book. I just learned from Ahmed. Be honest, video. like color and light is not my favorite one from Gurney. Yeah, I like really uh, imaginative realism. I think that like, for me, that's a really great book, you know, because on color and light, of course, he talks about like painting mm -hmm. and I mean, color and light. The <laughs> uh, on imaginative realism, he talks about like more design kind of stuff, like how to come up with certain things, you know. Mm -hmm. And to me, that was the. I mean, I was I got both at the same time, and I like I read Color and Light first, and I was like, okay, but I was already had read um, How to Render from Scott Robertson, mm -hmm. and that talks a lot about like light and materials as well. Yeah. So when I got to imaginative realism, I was like, damn, why is no one talking about this book? You know, like I find it so much nicer than the other one. And okay. I guess so it's, I, it's, I really have to um, read it now. You're going to kill me, but I have the book. I just haven't read it. And yet. you never read it. Yeah, damn, exactly. dude, that's a great You one, see, I, I saw that. I got them both at the same time, just as you did. And I only read the first one, Color and Light. And then I was like, okay, I'll read this one after I'm done with this one. And then some other stuff got in the way and, you know, <laughs> you just keep that, that one there yeah. for whatever. It's like, I already have it. You know, I can read it anytime. And then you get like busy with other stuff Dude, and you forget that, about that it. That kind of phrasing, it's what kills projects, you know, like I can do it anytime. Exactly. <laughs> like, that, that's dude. procrastination talking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. I'm dealing with that at the time. So <laughs> I, I deal with that a, a little bit too, you know, so. Mm. <clears throat> Except Dom, Dom, it's always working. You can see man, Dom is a corner, freaking you know? machine like of a production, bit. dude. He never stops. He's sketching right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm embarrassed like, because I have it all together, I, but no. <laughs> I, I wish I had my my sketchbook as well, but he it's supporting my microphone, so I, I can't even sketch at the same time. Oh, I see. <laughs> <laughs> 
No, man. Right. You, you were on the right. I well, actually got back on sketching these days, you know. It's refreshing to to go back to pen and paper. It's I've been trying the yeah. and NVIDIA Canvas type of software that they just released now. Oh, yeah. You know, the old Gogan, I think it's called, right? Mm -hmm. I only tried yeah. that a couple of times, like a couple of years ago, I think it was. And that was cool. But now they made it like a into a desktop app that you can download. And By the, the way, only man. downside for some people <laughs> is that it runs on an RTX card only. So that's, oh, um, yeah, that's a limitation right there. Yeah. By the way, man, the latest painting that you posted with that, Dude. that's really breathtaking. Oh, like, honestly. bro. I, that was such a cool way to come back after I already told you I took a break, right? So I'm yeah. like, I think I saw it. So Jama Jurab, I've posted about it and I'm like, what? They released another one? I got to try it out. It turns out this one has layers. So you can actually, you know, tell a difference between like, if you want to paint grass oh. or mountains or because the other one didn't have any layers you just painted everything like it feels like microsoft paint in the early days you know <laughs> the uh, the windows xp and stuff but um i remember i i posted that image and someone in the comments <laughs> were like what the fuck the last the last slide is so hilarious because it's like the raw flat color version right and he's like what, what is that and i'm like yeah man that's how the program works but yeah man I, I i had so much fun with that one it was just i would say comfort zone for me you know open up environments organic that guy by the way was he was initially a rock and then i kind of um suggested myself that kind of image you know like it kind of like when you look at clouds and stuff and you see certain shapes that suggest you some stuff in your imagination yeah. so i'm like hmm, that could be looks like a turtle you know so i made that guy into like a mm -hmm. yeah, a turtle yeah what's now. nice is that it, it's a starting point right exactly not, it doesn't give you everything so because if you look at the what i assume to be the result of the software that you have posted there like with just a few brush strokes on top of it which one? Um, the like the third image, right? <clears throat> when oh, you yeah, look at yeah. that, yeah, and the painting, like you can see that a lot was done in the painting. Mm -hmm. But maybe if you haven't had the idea with that first image, you know, like to jump off of, exactly, you you wouldn't have achieved like and because I know some people would be like, oh, but that gives you everything. Like you're not an artist anymore because you're not like. It, doing yeah, anything i mean but it, it's not like that at all <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's completely but it's like, a lot of work. this is the same story with photo bashing or starting from a 3d base or starting you start with something anyway you know you can of course you can even if i come up with like sometimes when i'm lost like this is something that i explain in my my course as well sometimes if i'm lost you know I don't know exactly what to paint, what to come up with. One way to find ideas for me is to just recreate the looking at clouds kind of vibe, you know, just by scratching the paper and just laying down random brush strokes until I find some shapes and stuff. And then, you know, you use the magic of digital medium where you can just edit all that stuff around and yeah, man, and just come up with some new stuff. Is that cheating? To be a purist. <laughs> I don't think it, it so. Is just a, a tad bit, but like, I won't tell anyone. So <laughs> okay, thanks, bro. Fine. <laughs> <laughs> don't reveal my secrets. <laughs> don't get me canceled, please. <laughs> All right. Do you guys want to segue into the? Oh yeah. I so think it might be. <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean, right. like forty minutes in. Yeah, maybe we've we been thirty <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so this was the introduction. Now we're gonna start talking about what we are here for exactly. Um, so we wanted to make this episode to address this this kind of uh, moment where, you know, some some of us have been scammed at some point, right? As artists, like we've been approached by a client who promised something and didn't deliver, but not at a professional like, not like you did the job and they paid a little less than they said, or not like that. Just straight out scams, like. They're not who they claim to be. They present to you in a certain way that, you know, uh, it's like 
um, how to say this, misleading, and you kind of take it for because you're so young and and you're like innocent in that sense. You know, you're like hungry for more work and you're like excited because of the name who's approaching you which turns out to not be real then so yeah we wanted to just kind of address this in in this episode and yeah i think <laughs> i think dom has some, <laughs> some interesting stories to tell right. us about that <clears throat> yeah so anytime that you see a sender that doesn't have the company name at the end that's something you should probably watch out for. So I guess we can talk about my experience with dealing with a scammer who was supposedly from Lucasfilm. <laughs> and when was this? this was like what? Last year? Ago? Or no, last was it last year? Forgot when I forgot. I it's been a long time ago, but mm-hmm. anyway, let's yeah, say a I few months like, ago. Like six months. <laughs> months ago. <laughs> yeah. Should I show the screen? Okay, sure. yeah, I'll switch to the okay. full screen mode. There we go. So here's an example of a scam mm-hmm. offer. So Lucasfilm writer job offer. And uh, I was going into this thinking I was going to be a writer. Actually, <laughs> like, hey guys, I'm not going to be a concept artist. I'm going to be a writer instead. <laughs> <laughs> so I like how yeah. the, the the mail address is from Gmail. <laughs> Lucas film remote artist <laughs> Gmail. Gmail. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so we totally skipped over that when I showed mm-hmm. you guys. And like yeah, uh, it was like oh first, like, <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah that, you know what? That's the first thing. Like I remember that day when you showed us this. I genuine. I mean, we all got genuinely excited about this. Like, oh my god, my bro Dom is gonna work with Lucasfilm, bro. And then I looked but at then, that, and it, it was kind of like a little red flag for me. It was like, wait, they don't have like a corporate email address. What, what is this? Why is this from Gmail? Wait a minute. <laughs> wait a minute. And and then I was like, okay, maybe they're like an external agency or something. So let's just roll with it. But then keep going yeah down. so <clears throat> they get you they have like all the description and everything it looks like a normal job offer that you see on like indeed or something right so you just give you the, yeah the I, I think they probably like cut and paste something from actual jobs you know yeah so, so like... you have a position full-time <laughs> 20 to 40 hours a week Pay is forty five to sixty dollars an hour. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sounds too good to be true. <laughs> Probably so, copy pasting that from real job offers and stuff. Yeah, mm. paid time off, bonus pay, insurance. Benefits. Every benefit that you can possibly <laughs> imagine, just <to> like <laughs> towing at the bait. Yeah, and then mm-hmm. yeah, they give the company description and then how to apply. And this is where you go into the rabbit hole. So they like you to have a chat through their HR, quote unquote, Telegram Telegram page. (laughs) This was the second red flag, right? To watch out for is, yeah, if they ask you to use like a Telegram app or a job interview, then like, yeah, it's a red flag. Because usually, right, they... If you're going into a job offer, they usually tell you to have a video call with somebody at the very least, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. For, you know, that, that would I be mean, the normal approach, right? I never. Like, yeah, I never had We're not going to discuss like, this through a chat to text chat t- type of app. Let's talk yeah, face Imagine if the guy was like, hey, send me <laughs> a WhatsApp. Like, I think it's pretty much the same thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he will not trust him that much. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, um, yeah, so they told me to message this guy, Liam Nguyen, which is probably like some dude in Ethiopia. Or, <laughs> or, I, don't I gotta know, say, Ethiopia. I gotta say, guys, that at this point, um, well, I just remember that I was once approached by someone at Disney for a movie, right? Based mm-hmm. on 
the painting that actually started my IP Hevenurian, right? Which they happened to find on somewhere I never post on. I think it was mm. Tumnel, uh, Tumblr, you know? So, um, and they call me via WhatsApp, right? So yeah. I was like, okay, they, they were from Canada. And it turned out the job offer was real, right? I, I ended up not getting the gig, but it was real. So I'm just saying, you know, it, it seems like these things can actually happen this way. But like, they just called you out of the blue? Like with no, no they, they prior first, contact? No, yeah, they, they first approached me on uh, via email. Oh. And then they asked me if I would be down for a call. For a call, not for a mm -hmm. chat, not for a text chat, you know. So, um, yeah, just saying that, that that can happen. But this thing Dom is talking about is, is pretty different. And you guys are going to find out why. So please, Dom, keep going. Yeah. So after he told me to download the Telegram app, that's what I did. So I downloaded the app real quick. And I contacted the guy, Liam Nguyen, through his username, Artist Lucas Film. I'm surprised it didn't get taken. But <laughs> yeah, so as I was talking to this guy, <clears throat> he, I think he, he told me to email back this guy confirming that I was talking to him I, I think and then afterwards uh, he told me to get some supplies for this job so after um, he told me all that he said we're going to send you a check for was it like four thousand dollars something like that I remember, I think it was like four or five thousand bucks. Yeah. Yeah. So that was for so, you to buy all that equipment to be able to communicate with them and to perform, right. to do the job, right? Yeah. So the equipment was like, uh, like a check in <laughs> scanner. So when you <laughs> check into the job, you check in your timestamp, whatever. And then they were going to give me a brand new, like, macbook pro mm -hmm. for i don't know how much that is but yeah, yeah give it's me a those new super MacBook expensive and like... ones like around <laughs> two thousand bucks yeah. or something then yeah. a camera and... then a microphone or something because you didn't have all this it's equipment like... that you have right now back then yeah yeah so they're like yeah you're gonna use this money to buy that equipment and i was like okay so i took the check uh <laughs> Yeah, they, I don't know if they, I still have that check, but. Um, and by the way, all of this I happened like in in the span of what, a day or two, right? A, yeah, a day or two. <laughs> uh, I can't find the check, but anyways, yeah, they sent me the check. Mm -hmm. And so I took check and I signed it and everything and I cashed it. Um, just oh. in time before, like, I was about to, like, before it, like, sent through, which it yeah. didn't. But <clears throat> he was saying, like, okay, um, for me to give you the supplies, I need you to send me, like, a thousand dollars up front. Just use, like, a Zelle pay through your bank. And I was like, okay, well, I'll. Um, okay, what happened? Um, I froze for a second. Okay, I thought it was uh -huh. only is me. Is Dom frozen? Or is... Yeah, seems like, um, <laughs> it looks like I messed it up because I just clicked on his webcam. Just I wanted to show him like full screen, you know, when he was talking. Oh, I, I see. So just kicked, kicked him off. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> is that how you do it? <laughs> Yeah, I don't man. think so. Ah, uh, no worries. Hope he's gonna be back in no time. Yeah, but you know, um, just continuing, like segueing a little bit mm -hmm. while, like we wait for him. Yeah, it's we were talking about how you were called on WhatsApp, and we were talking about like Telegram being a bit suspicious, right? Mm -hmm. But I don't think that it has anything to do with those apps. You know, like it's the approach that people give. That's yeah, the weird absolutely. thing. Absolutely. Because mm -hmm. you usually have like a method that 
uh, people that are actually interested in your work that they yeah. will follow. And it's usually yeah. like, hey, um, we saw your work on X website and we like it. Uh, maybe they will point you to a particular piece of yours that they like, mm -hmm. or maybe like they, oh, we were wondering about your avail availability. I'm yeah. X person from Y studio from, you know, they will actually give their credentials in a in a short way. And like that huge wall of text that Dom got, like, uh, I don't know about you, but I never got that on a first contact email, you know? <laughs> like, Me neither. I never got that kind of thing. By it the way, can, like, you, um, can you contact Dom right now and, and text him? Yeah, yeah. Maybe he doesn't gonna... know. Maybe he he sees us as like frozen or something. But yeah, yeah. I, I, I do I just, remember. Like... Um, I remember when it happened, man. I remember we were so crazy about it, you know, and then we started to see these um these kind of red flags you know first it was the email address then it was the um, the way of approaching this you know it was so weird like when we saw the telegram kind of stuff we're like lucas films and they, they want to interview you through telegram but it's it's like a it's a call right or and 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 i remember dom said like no 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 they say it's actually Man, I'm gonna let him tell this story because the the interview was a joke. You know, it was like just a couple questions, and it was yeah. <laughs> it was ridiculous. But uh, yeah, Dom is coming back shortly, so okay, just you good. Know. Thank you, bro. So, yeah, um, sure. rather than the app, yeah, it's the way you approach the um, yeah the situation, right? So when this mm -hmm. happened to me, it wasn't really suspicious in any way I could tell. You know, and they they never really said anything beyond like, OK, so we would like to count on you. But, you know, at the time, our team is packed already, like we're full. And if someone leaves the team or anything happens during the production of this project, you know, we will let you know and maybe, you know, we can count on you. So it's basically like, um, what do they call that? Like a talent bag or something. They, they just want to know if they can count on you. Bro, what happened? Yeah. <laughs> I think my computer like overheated, so it just froze. Everything oh, froze. Man. It, it's just, weird, it's you know, like all of the I, artwork. That just happened when I clicked on your image of your webcam because I wanted to display you full uh, screen as you were talking. He, he froze your computer from <laughs> I yeah. I messed up your computer, bro. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh good. Okay. <laughs> I was like, what is why is my computer no, but like we were just like talking, continuing like how maybe like the web the website or the like you can you should always approach the email with the like a foot back right but mm -hmm. don't be sus suspicious just because they mentioned telegram or anything like that it's more like the kind of approach that they gave and yeah. like uh, hmm. the amount of hoops that you had to go through just like oh get this job that we already got for you you just need to like this 100 list of things you know it's like yeah. that's not how it works I was continue. I was continue <laughs> continuing my story. The ghost, but I, I uh, cut off. I was like getting into the juicy details. <laughs> um, what was I saying? The last part. Yeah, you were you were about to say uh, you you were about to get into the um, the interview thing. Uh, you were telling us about the gear that they they made you buy with those oh. that that money that they yeah. sent you. You just cashed it in. Yeah, so I cashed in that check, and at this point, I was, like, talking to you guys. I was talking to the guy at the same time I was talking to you guys. Mm -hmm. So I, I think I was telling you, like, hey, I'm sending money to them to buy, like, <laughs> the Bro, supplies. I remember <laughs> this moment exactly. I remember then, when, yeah. when we said, okay, then just, you know, tell them you got the money. But don't take the money, right? Tell me you got the money, but you, and you've bought no, no. this stuff just to see what um, they say, because they were like rushing you, right? Yeah. So yeah. we were using like different payment methods. So he was like, okay, because I canceled the payments um, as soon as I found out it was like getting kind of sketchy, and mm -hmm. then he was like, why'd you cancel the payments for? It's like it's not. I said it's not going through right now. So he's like, okay, let's try and use like PayPal or something. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, well, <laughs> I'll try that. And then 
I sent it through and then I canceled it again. And so I was like, it's it's not really going through. And then he said, okay, let's let's try using gift cards. So what I want you to do oh, is no. to go to a <laughs> best <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Get a so he, he sent me like a screenshot of like these Nordstrom mall gift mm-hmm. cards. And he's like, I want you to go to the mall and buy gift cards so I can cash them in. So that I mean, way I can give you the money. At this point, it was like so obvious, right? It might not yeah. be as obvious to you who are the guy who's so excited about getting this job, right? Yeah. It's like you, you can't really yeah. think logically and, and... Yeah. yeah. And at that point, that's when you mentioned like, oh, this, I heard about like these scams that... Because I, I used to watch that stuff on YouTube. There's people yeah. who spend their time just messing up with scammers. You know, they just spend mm. their waste their time, basically. And that's yeah. where I knew about the, the gift card kind of scam, you know, which is. And then yeah. I was like, wait, he's asking me to buy gift cards. <laughs> <laughs> and it was that moment. moment. Yeah. yeah, it was at this moment. At the moment that, that they knew. like um, were trying to send you money to buy the things, like I, I was a bit okay. Let, let's uh, scroll back and see the the story from the start with a new eye, you know. Hmm. And then like all of those, oh, it's a Gmail account. What the fuck? Like this doesn't sound right. And then, like, every single was, piece. This doesn't sound right as place. well. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's like wait, paid time off, forty five to sixty dollars an hour. Sounds too good. <laughs> like, like I'm set <laughs> at that point. But I was like, yeah, I'm glad I like checked with you guys though. That honestly, I'm glad you fun. managed to I, I cancel all the um, the transactions and yeah. everything. Because <clears throat> they basically yeah. so the way it works is that they claim to have sent you money, right? Uh, did you get to see a transaction like taking place? Or you didn't see anything um, at all on your account? Did you see like incoming about... money from this account or something like that? Yeah, so no? when I cashed the check, it said it was pending. Okay. So it meant the, there you go. the check was still trying to take a couple of days to process and go through. But so I think the way it I works tried, is... I canceled it before it like, you know, yeah. continued to process. Exactly. And then that's when I like just. just Close Telegram. I uninstalled everything. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> called the so, bank up. I was exactly. Like, Yo, I think the, I just got scammed. The the weird works I think is that they have this window of time to cancel mm-hmm. their fake uh, money sending. You know the big check. Yeah. Exactly. So they only do that once you have sent your real money, but. At this point where someone who claims to be someone of that caliber, right, asks you for your money, right? <laughs> like, yeah, they ask you for your money so that mm-hmm. way when you cash the check, it's okay if from it goes them. through or not. Yeah, it it's matter. just an exchange of, of value. Yeah. It's, it's the same thing, right? Just give us your money and we send us, we send you your uh, our money, right? It's just going to take a couple of days. Yeah. So that's why they were rushing you. Like, can you do it today? Can you go right now yeah. to the mall and buy those <laughs> gift cards? <laughs> it's yeah, like, you know, like right now, we have an yeah. hour. Yeah, and he got he got like pissed off. I was like, hey, this this sounds like I don't know. Like, I just feel rushed about this. Like, what's all the rush? And he's like, there's mm-hmm. no rush. It's like this is totally legitimate. <laughs> like, if a guy needs to assure you that it's legitimate, it's because it's not. <laughs> yeah. Man. Like Andre was with me the whole time, so I was like, <laughs> I was so thankful that I wasn't doing this by myself. But yeah, I was yeah, I think out. um, it's like, yeah, we, and we then, got then excited, you saw the right? the guys from mm-hmm. Lucas Films like officially posting that on their website. Oh yeah, and then you guys looked that up, and I was like, oh, they were yeah, like, this is so there's this scam good. thing going on around where someone pretends to be us we will never ask you guys for that kind of stuff so please don't fall for that don't give your money to anyone and all that kind of stuff because they 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 target young people (laughs) who are so hungry for the industry and they would do anything to get in 
right? Especially yeah, and it was way, during COVID too, so people yeah. were looking for jobs, mm-hmm. and so that was exactly. the perfect time to like strike. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad you made it out safe, <clears throat> you know, and you didn't. It took a while. <laughs> yeah, it took like three <laughs> weeks for them to get my account back. So. Oh, because they froze your bank account or something like that. Yeah, oh, they man. sent like an investigator to trace back where mm-hmm. it came from and then eventually they removed the check from my account and then yeah i got my account back finally save it down. all the money was still in there nothing left so, i was kind of yeah. scared for you when you said that oh. your bank was sending you messages about uh like canceling your account or banning oh. you or something like that because yeah, you do these kind of things ever like, again where you bluff those kind of transactions you know you're just sending they, this amount of money and then you, you're not sending it and then you do it again and then again. And it, you, you did it yeah. in several takes because th- there's a limit, right? For a transaction. Because mm-hmm. it breaks the trust with the bank to see if like, yeah. you know, you're a good yeah, customer. Yeah. So if you do, if you keep, or if you fraud like the bank, they're gonna mm-hmm. come after you with a fee. So you have to pay this because yeah. like you sent us a fake check. It's like, yeah so thankfully they were really nice about it and like they didn't you know they say this happens quite a bit yeah (laughs) it was not your fault as well you know so like (laughs) they're not only nice they were like doing the right thing (laughs) Mm -hmm. like i just don't want to pay like a fee yeah yeah i mean it was like big enough of a hassle for you without like having to pay for it you know so yeah man what a story <laughs> what an adventure yeah. so i mean i'm sure those days were some sort of like a lot of pressure a lot of stress a lot of like anxiety right going on in your mind because it's like what's going to happen now you know i i feel so bad for how can i fall for this you know like, it's like my I've bank, never now, heard of my bank before. account yeah. yeah i didn't even know this like you could do that you could send money to somebody and then like you know have them do the whole trickery thing like reverse uh I don't know. there's a whole twisted world out there man <laughs> people come mm-hmm. up with lots of creative ways to get things from you yeah. <clears throat> so yeah i don't know i've never um i never got into anything like that but um yeah i remember i i mean last last year no like a couple years ago uh, i came back from la from uh, lightbox from meeting you in person dom and i i was so motivated and i wanted to um you know i i started to do this this daily painting routine this daily sketching stuff which by the way it was a nice <clears throat> way for me to come up with stuff to explore for my own project you know like you said before andrea like these things are cool to explore and and keep you know developing stuff further and set like a base for you to keep develop developing further well most of those half an hour sketches daily sketches turned out into f- I don't know, four hour long paintings, five hour long paintings, fully finished paintings, you know. And I was like, I kept that going for a couple of weeks, maybe three weeks. And then I was invited to give like a master class in Barcelona. And I went there with my friends. I brought them with me. And that was an amazing day. It was the birthday of uh, one of us. So that was a nice way to celebrate as well. And then I came back with this feeling of i just broke the chain you know i was on a strike a streak you know so for so many days in a row and today i didn't do the daily sketching thing so i i was like it's over you know it's over like like that kind of oh no it's it's done you know it's we lost right that kind of feeling like you feel defeated and that got me into a pretty dark time as well like man how can i never really stick to something that i set myself up to so i got this offer you know uh someone i happen to know in real life as well in person 
just asked me for um, like a design. And I'm like, okay, so we, we got, we, we met and we discussed the details and I let him know about how much it was going to be, you know, how much I usually charge. And they're like, yeah, no, no worries. No worries about that. Don't worry. You know, it's, it's fine. And, I'm like, and, and about the deadline, it's like, don't worry about the deadline. It's fine whenever you have it. And I'm like, okay, so it's a lot of freedom, you know, but of course I didn't want to spend all my time on that. So I, w I wanted to get it out of my way as quickly as possible because it wasn't anything, it wasn't something that I, I usually do, you know, like it was not so related, like the, the end result, let's say it's not so, um, it's not for a video game or for a movie or for an animation or anything like that. So I was like, okay, let's get this over with, you know, and kind of tailor it to their needs as much as we, we can. So I made sure that I stayed in touch with them and everything. And then at the end, when I was done with it, right? By the way, I struggled a little bit to kind of explain them why the way they wanted it is not going to work because it's visually not appealing in that sense, you know? It's like it's not even serving your own needs that you've been telling me about. So after convincing them that this is how, how it's looking better you know they said okay yeah you're right we, we prefer it this way then i'm like okay then it's done now just give me the money and they're like what is it that much and i'm like it's actually the minimum amount and i've been working on this for two weeks this should have taken me like a couple of days and i made sure i stayed on touch with you guys for the entire time and to make sure you liked every single bit of it and they kept me, like, kept giving me, like, all the, um, you know, ex excuses about why they can't pay that week and how they would pay the next they week. they can't pay that much now, maybe. And because they, they, they never expected it to be that much. And I'm like, but I told you how much I charge. And they're like, yeah, but I thought that was, like, for bigger companies and bigger clients and... You know, because this was like an isolated type of commission. So I'm like, okay. But Didn't I, I did the job. But I did the job. Yeah. Now what? You know, it's been two weeks. I worked on this for two weeks. And it's like, okay, I'm paying next week, you know. And they kept that going for like six or seven weeks or so. Each week telling me that the next week is going to be the one. So I got to a point where oh, I was no. like, <laughs> where I was like, dude, listen, um, I was looking forward to this as a way for me to get back into this discipline, you know, and kind of paint again and sketch and get myself into a schedule. And this is not paying off, like <laughs> literally not paying, you know. <laughs> and yeah. then they they started to make this excuse like, but you didn't say it was going to be this much. You did, you blah, 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 you know. And I'm like, dude, you know what? Okay. So we just left it. I said, look, I'm going to destroy the, the finished result. And whenever you want me to do something, you pay me and I work, right? And I'm like, do whatever you want. I'm just telling you, I don't have the money right now. When I'll have the money, I'll pay you. It's been like, what, two years now? Still haven't heard anything. I was counting on this anyway. So yeah. I forgot about, yeah, I forgot about that absolutely forgot about that you know it's it was completely unprofessional and to be honest i wouldn't expect it any less from uh from them like again you don't see these things in the beginning but as you're going through it you know you're into the yeah the thing already well, you're like okay i regret getting in here you know <laughs> but then you, you got to get out somehow and that's the only time that I happen to have any negative experiences in that sense, you know, professionally speaking. I don't think um, I ever had like someone who never paid, you know, like I had some people that were a little bit of a struggle to like have to ask for like two weeks straight. Hey, like, look, um, you owe me money, but it was never something like they owe me the entire thing because I always charge like some portion of it beforehand you know like at least to cover the costs of my time mm -hmm. that was always like 
before. And that comes from like me, uh, my my dad, he used to like, he worked at a company, but then on at nights he used to do freelance work as well for his own stuff. You know, he's not mm -hmm. an artist or anything, but like, he was very jaded for the same thing, you know, like clients not paying. So he created this policy of always receiving like at least half of the money first. Mm -hmm. And some people don't want, like they either don't, don't want to, or they can't pay half of everything first, yeah. you know, like I understand that like maybe half is not like feasible for them to pay you because they also don't know if you, if you can do the work or anything like that. But, yeah, you should always receive like some part of it first, you know, because <clears throat> that makes you more comfortable to work and also it tight, ties them to you, you know. So like yeah. if they can't pay you like this small amount before you start, how the hell can you trust them that they will pay you the what I assume to be the larger amount later, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Where I had issues was mm, a couple of cases where, well, first the person after the work was done, they took a lot of time to and when i say a lot of time it was like less than a month you know but what i mean a lot of time just because they say that like they kept saying hey i will pay you tomorrow and they never did mm -hmm. and if if the guy like came up to me and said hey uh, i will have the money like in a month make sure to remind me that like to pay you or like in a week or it was something that yeah, was established, i actually prefer you know? that so you don't have to like run I would... with the stress of he said tomorrow yeah, exactly today is tomorrow so yeah. where's my money right and then no no it's yeah, actually so like, tomorrow and, and i'm like <laughs> and i'm even like a decently nice guy i think you know like if the guy says yeah. tomorrow i wait like 40 hours because some places in the world like tomorrow it's a couple of hours ahead or before or that mm -hmm. kind of thing you know so you you give it some time but yeah you don't need to go through that stress with the person and yeah. Look, man, big companies that actually pay you money, it's not like that, man. It, it's always those like small gigs in the beginning that they don't pay you shit. And they, yeah. They're the ones who are cheap as fuck, you know, and they mm -hmm. like take time to pay. And the, and the big companies are just like, oh, is this the amount? Okay, uh, you just send the invoice and maybe like the established period of amount of time that they usually take to pay people, you get your money like. No it's like that asked, one, like, uh, yeah, like that one Chris Doe counter that he said that if a client's not paying you, you just tell them, okay, well, we can't do business then. Just save your money up until you have enough and then come back to me so we can work. Yeah. Otherwise, yeah. <laughs> Whenever <laughs> the person complains that's about a, the budget, that's right? a legit answer. Yeah. And it's such a badass answer as well. You know, like, okay, then don't waste my time if you don't have anything to give me in exchange for my, what, the value that I'm providing you with, yeah. you know. Yeah, like they don't, I was have, a, yeah. okay, go ahead. <laughs> I was just saying they don't save the money beforehand before they actually call you on the job. Hmm. So yeah. It's like, why are you and sometimes <laughs> it's just like out of budget for them, you know. So, yeah. and I tend to be like respectful because it's, you don't know where they come from and like little money for you might be like a lot of money for other people. So uh, whenever they approach and I say the price and like, oh, is, this is too high and everything. I was like, well, no problem. Like if you can't pay me, it's fine. Like, <laughs> OK, yeah, that's <laughs> we just way. can't work it. together. This is the case yeah, that I like have. now, you know, my price in case you want to. Th that, this is the case that I have with some other guys from uh, they had like a fantasy project of some sort and they approached me on discord i think it was and i think i sh i showed you guys this already um and they said i said okay so are we having a call or something and they were like oh no we actually do it via we do it via chat you know text and 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 that's it because we we want to keep it like on record and stuff and i'm like anyway so what's the deal you know uh, yeah, like they wanted to keep like a, um, how, how should I say this? Like, I'm not sure. They, they wanted to have everything, like instead like of recording a call. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Just to know exactly what they said and when they said it and what I said and all that stuff, which I can understand to a, to a certain point. What I'm saying is that um, 
it was a legit interview you know like so how are you feeling about this 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 and this because this is what we need you to do this is how long it's going to take this is you know now let us know about the price how much is this going to cost when i told them how much it was it was going to be they said oh that's a little bit out of our price range you know and they didn't ask if i can do less or anything like that they just said um look adrian like we understand why people pay you that much because we see it reflected in your work we're having some plans to increase our company you know the size of our company in the future we might be getting some new deals this uh year so we might contact you when we we can get to that level you know and i deeply appreciated that because it's like no waste of time no like can you do less than that that's so expensive why do you charge so much that shows much more professionality in that sense you know rather than just simply asking you to lower the price or just complaining yeah. about like but why is so expensive you know so you can tell instantly how like you can read the clients in that sense you know and i remember i had this kind of scary moment when i was finishing um one of the first big freelance gigs that i had a couple of years ago and they were not paying and we had a contract and everything um so i was a little bit on the deadline like a few days but we were talking in the span of months you know so i'm late yeah. in a few, for a few days we had a very good relationship like we were talking like if it was like a familiar kind of um ambient you know like very uh type of transparent environment like Hey guys, I'm not gonna make it, and no worries, man. Like if it takes a couple more days, no problem. You know, it's not. Don't rush it. It's fine. So I didn't feel like as entitled to complain about them not paying me for like a month and a half. I think it took. And they turned out to have some issues <laughs> with money at that exact time, so they couldn't pay when they said they were gonna pay. And I said, hey after a month or so right i was like uh what's with the money like i haven't re received anything i'm not sure if you've sent it <laughs> you know? they're like oh yeah we know we're doing all we can to send the money to you you know and then they ended up paying but that was like the little kind of scary moment and i i posted about it on social media i was like hey guys what do you do in these cases you know what should i do now and I, I found I found out lots of people charge in advance, which is something that I can already like understand, you know, like, oh, that's why I charge in advance, you know, and I'm like, and it works like do people really pay you in advance all the time? Because that's how all of us would like to work. Right. But not not all the people like to do that. You know, not all clients like to mm. pay you in advance. Yeah, because they're like, I mean, I don't know. I had a guy who approached me for a commission. He was like a singer or something and he wanted me to draw like a portrait of him. And he was like, how much is it? And I'm like, this much. And he's like, oh, that's okay. So um, I want you to do this and this and this. And I'm like, okay, but um, can you, because I had that in my mind, you know, from the previous experience. I'm like, okay, but can you pay in advance? And he's like, what, bro? I I never had anyone ask me for the entire sum in advance, you know, like maybe we can do 50 50, but not like 100% in advance. And I'm like, okay, so it's not that normal as far as I can see. <laughs> but I'm not sure. Have you guys had that, that uh, experience? Maybe like um, 50 50, it's like the most common thing. You know? yeah. like because it's good for both parts. Yeah. They, you get half you of it in the beginning. for like an upfront fee. And yeah, so they, you pay, they pay like maybe 30% up front and then you do a little bit and then, okay, then you could pay the rest. That's it. Yeah. yeah. Or like when, um, when the job's done, they example, pay you the rest. Yeah. In concept art, like usually you have uh, some sketching phase, you know, no matter if it's value sketching, if it's painting, it's whatever it is, like you'll call sketching, you have like the initial stage and then you have the finishing stage. Mm -hmm. So like before you start on the initial stage, like you get paid something. And then like depending on the deal maybe after you finish the first part to get paid another portion and then like at the end you get paid another one like it all depends on how you set it you just have to be careful to like avoid scams because some people will take advantage of like hungry artists looking for work you know 
and they will not pay you so it's like of course maybe you don't if you are like extremely um prominent in the industry you know you can like mm -hmm. charge everything up front and put your own price but for majority of people that's not the case at all you know like they will have to deal with the subject of talking about money with clients and it's not great if you're if you're not comfortable talking about it you know like you should be comfortable it's yeah that's I mean, why you, you should train yourself to, to people yeah to yeah. get used to talking about that you know because yeah. naturally exactly the very first times you're gonna find yourself in that situation you're gonna be nervous and i can bet you're gonna be giving more of your side you know like you're gonna be bending over you know way more than you should you know just to satisfy the client and that screws you over you know but you're like yeah. oh yeah but it's fine because at least now i get the the experience and the exposure and i got to say that i worked on this title it's all of um like a I don't know a combination of well it's a balance of yeah. value you know of things that it's you know a, benefits like it's a very competitive industry that has a lot of money like running on it like running around it you know yeah like, and then you have very inexperienced people that are passionate about their work because like if it's art people tend to assume that you run on passion you know like you eat passion for breakfast that's how you work you, you don't actually eat food so you remember don't the money. meme with it's the like, guy in the fridge on the back like it's it's the, the fridge is empty right and he's like why do you need to, to be paid for your art bro isn't that your passion is like because <laughs> i need to eat as well you know? it's like you because yeah. like drawing is a skill like not everyone everyone can draw but not everyone can draw well mm. you know so you have to like learn that because yeah, it's a, yeah, exactly. I think, well, the way I see it is like it's it's a specialized field. It's not something you yeah. can be trained in a couple of weeks and you're good to go to work, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's something that takes not only months, but years to master, right? And that's why you as a beginner get those kind of jobs that pay less, you know, and you as a veteran get those kind of gigs that you know they're more prestigious and more because it's it's all it corresponds together i don't know it's i i it's the way i see it it's like you're a more experienced more reliable guy it's not only about the skill you have it's also about the the habit the pattern of thinking you have the way you solve problems and all that stuff you know it's the experience yeah. you yeah. the expertise yeah, i, I would think say. it's like how reliable you are on providing like good designs and images you know so like if a yeah. person hires you and they look at your portfolio and like you have this consistency in terms of quality mm -hmm. whether like it's quality of design or, or quality of illustration like doesn't really matter they just project you know like oh it has this level of quality and we want something similar to our project so like yeah. we'll hire him and usually like if the person has this uh, the like em employer has this vision you know of like i mm -hmm. want the quality the money becomes almost secondary you know because they are used to dealing with like um highly that valued people just reminds me of chris doe now that dom mentioned him you know um he has this video on how charging by time punishes you you know because like by the hour or something? yeah by the hour yeah. by the day i don't know because it's like Okay, so how much is this gonna cost me, right? And you say, 20K, right? And it's like, okay, how, how long is it gonna take? And you say, five minutes. And it's like, what? And why is it 20K, you know? Is it better if I say two months? And it's like, yeah, that's better, you know? <laughs> it's like, why? Because I do the same, but I do it in, in way less time, you know? So it's mm -hmm. this perception of, value i guess and i forgot the name of that video in particular but i would like to to, to share it somewhere in the comments or something because it's it's so true man like it reminds me of this story of a man who they had like a giant industrial machine and it was it was messed up and it took that guy like around five to ten minutes to find out what it was and he pointed out at that 
uh, it was like a screw or a handle or something that was loose or something. It's like, it's that thing right there, you know? And it turned out to be the right thing and they fixed it. And it took that guy five minutes to figure that out. And he was like, now you have to pay me for this job, you know, because <laughs> I told you what it was. This machine is like super expensive. You have to, you know, you know. and they were like, why that much? It only took you five minutes. And he's like, yeah, but it took me a lifetime to learn how to figure that out in five minutes. You know, same thing for, Ooh. I don't know, uh, <laughs> logo designers or anything like that. You know, it doesn't matter if yeah. I come up with the idea on um, um on a dirty piece of paper or anything like that you know in fact most iconic designs in the industry you know some of them have been started they 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 began in very weird ways you know like i don't know imagine the design of darth vader was you know a result of a conversation in a bar or something between art directors you know and no just like this look you know and it's like the first Darth Vader wasn't a piece of paper like that you know um I'm making this up by the way it's not <laughs> the way it happened but imagine you know something like that does it make it less valuable no because it's not about it's not about the time it takes to to make it you know yeah and of course it's an important I mean uh, part of the equation it's an important aspect time like the more you spend the the more you can improve something right i guess but it's like yeah there's um my, my the way that i see it, it's like people like to think about um charging by time you know because it's the universal thing you know so like you exactly can, yeah it's, it, an it's universal the only agreement. thing that like we all share you know some people are faster some people are slower yeah and then like he, the only thing that you can control it's time which it's why i think uh it also mm -hmm. it's why like we work x amount of hours a week and that kind of thing yeah right because the that's thing that you can equate i would say but like no i was just gonna say big clients big studios and all that stuff have no problem paying a lot of money to people who've been in the industry for 20 plus years because they know that you know, they have that kind of expertise, that kind of experience. They're very reliable to work with because they have that badge of work on their backs, you yeah. know, under their belt. So many years of so but many like, titles that they know also, this guy is a safe bet. He's not going to mess you up. Know, yeah, but like if you know that, let's say, um, I, I know that I can get something done in like one hour, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not the price. Like you charge per project then, you know? Like mm -hmm. you tell them, um, hey, it's going to cost this amount for the yeah. um, for the like whole design. Yeah. The sketching phase is X amount, the painting phase is X amount, and mm -hmm. so on. And then like they give you the deadline that they want, and then you split like your own time the way that you want to. Because here's the thing: um, if they tell you the deadline for something, and you know that it will take you less time to do it, you know? Like, there is no reason why you should, like, uh, charge less for that or anything, right? You charge per, per project, by project, and if they ask you, like, uh, oh, the deadline is this, and then you split it on your head, like, uh, each step, right? And then they ask you, oh, is this step taking that amount of time? You say, yeah, it's taking that amount of time. And, mm -hmm. you know, like, you, you, you are not supposed to be, like, working because they hired you as a freelancer that you're supposed to work like eight hours a day or 12 hours a day for them mm -hmm. so you can like have more clients going on at the same time and then while you wait for the feedback of one you are working on stuff for the other and that that's the way like you balance things and then because like you have to to organize your own time and then you are not always working on the time of them like it gives the impression that you're spending more time on something that didn't took as much and then like they see the value in the money that they are putting in you know yeah like it's not a i saw one day like uh a live stream from anthony jones and he was talking i, I know that he streamed uh he's this fast, conversation with man. a client he's fast yeah that's the fun. thing right he's fast as hell and then he was like uh talking with the client on the live stream 
because it was this indie client who was mm -hmm. like willing to go live with him to show what the actual process is for people nice. to like learn yeah. from and then he the client was like oh how much time it, it will take and then he was like oh it will take me i don't know three hours and i'll deliver this like five days from now you know and then like mm -hmm. in the mind of a regular client may I, I don't know the exact word so i don't want to yeah 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 in his, i get it but like it was something like that and then the client understood of course because he had worked with him before and like he's a very well-known artist but let's say that it's a new client that don't work with you as much and then you say the same thing they're like oh if it takes you three hours why can't you deliver like three hours from now you know yeah and it's like, that's not how it works mm -hmm. <laughs> like too much pressure at <clears throat> that point yeah yeah but that that's what i mean you know like the time it's it takes to do something doesn't reflect on the time that you have to deliver it or like the value that it has or anything like that it's just a measure of control right mm -hmm. yeah yeah i agree and i i i can really see the point there you know again coming back to the chris doe video it's like y you get punished for being good basically you know I mean, and I would I say you this... get punished for being fast, you know, because some people worry about only being fast and they're not necessarily good. And they're like, oh, why am I, am I not getting paid? I'm being fucked because I'm fast. And then yeah, you look yeah, at yeah, their yeah, work exactly. and they say, you're no, fast, you're being but you're also you suck. good. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Just take and your time. I remember having this conversation with someone where maybe I, I just heard it from a podcast or something, but I, I'm pretty sure I talked about someone with, about this. Um, it was about charging by hour or charging by day you know the difference between that and i think they said something like because if you charge per hour um the client kind of doesn't take it as seriously as if you charge by day so they have to think very well if, when you charge by day they have to think very well of their the changes they're asking you because imagine you're at the end of day one and they just ask you for some changes and you're like, okay, but that's going to take another day, you know, or part of another day, not the entire day. But since you're already working, you know, the second day, they have to pay you the second day as well. So now that you're asking me for this change, think it through very well in case you need me to do something else. Because the next time you call me, asking for another change you never know it might take another day right even though it's like two more hours but if i'm at the end of the first day and it takes two more hours those two more hours or a big time of those two more hours are going to be in the second day and you have to pay that so that was the the kind of reasoning between um you know charging by hour or by day mm -hmm. in that in that case and i kind of see the point but man the thing where you <clears throat> yeah you're just fast and good and it's like then why is that expensive you know it only took you five minutes <clears throat> it only took you a day that's exactly why it's expensive. yeah <laughs> yeah exactly because it's not like i was born and i was this good you know mm -hmm. we're not born geniuses yeah. like it takes a while to fail and learn and improve and <laughs> yeah you're laughing and another dude. trap like that. No, I was laughing because like we're not born geniuses, <clears throat> and like I never even became one yet. So like, calm down. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't born one, and it's, I it's still just, am not one. So it's just going. a quote that I it's just a quote that I had I heard recently, and I thought it was fitting the moment. But um, another trap, like you kind of reminded me of, it's the like eternal revisions, you know. So like, oh yeah, make clear with the client that like you have to stay. Let's that say that beginning. you were that you want to help them out and then you mm -hmm. say like okay in this price like you have one <laughs> or two revisions but then like anything <clears throat> after that you need to charge and then if you don't really like the client say like every revision counts so yeah <laughs> no like if you're if you're then really extra, establishing like a set price extra revisions can be paid apart you know and it's, yeah. they have a different and, price 
and, and that prevents people saying like oh can you like move this pixel one pixel to the side <laughs> you know because that kind of thing happens Exa exactly exactly it's like a minor change that it's so annoying you know like you could have told me that like way earlier you know yeah. like with the previous change it's where they kind of reserve those changes they split them in between different uh like different sessions i would say and they kind of give yeah. those those changes to you yeah. like in different sessions it's like why don't you if you already know all of this why don't you just tell me already like all of them i just apply the changes yeah. and i present it to you we both win you know move on just, yeah we we save a lot of time that way but what's yeah. your guys thoughts on business partners <laughs> business partners i think i hate yeah, the ones think... that i have on that weird podcast that i do <clears throat> <laughs> and we kind of talked about this Adrian, like how you were yeah. working with that one friend on that project mm -hmm. i remember i yeah. don't know if andre heard about it yet but yeah um, so i met this guy when i when i had my first job you know and he came in the team as a writer and he's really talented at writing i was like so impressed and that's why i ended up working with him uh and i realized that i we really went along very well together you know like our personalities kind of matched in many points in a way that i didn't connect with the team that i had at the studio and that's why we ended up leaving we <clears throat> we both kind of started this other journey you know of uh, freelance and we got together with um part of the team and yeah we started work we started to work on this this project of his which um he offered to us from many possibilities right many projects that they had is like choose one and we work on it you know and we we develop it into something at that time we were very inspired by indie game studios that were coming up with fantastic kickstarter campaigns and we were very motivated by that and we wanted to make something um that i think it's it's called a vertical slice or something like that which is yeah. you know and indie game development language that means like if you basically cut a slice of this cake or something it's like a demo of the finished product finished looks finished like it's just a piece of it you know a trailer so yeah half of the team left because they were busy they couldn't keep up with the daily meetings or weekly meetings with the team and that was a very very productive time in my life i gotta agree you know um working from home every single day i was so happy to to provide someone with my talent you know for that project and i was it was a fan fantasy type of project so i was like in love with it um and yeah then i don't know uh, it kind of faded away slowly you know like i was like nine ten months into that and of course that was like not going anywhere because we're we were lacking the programmer side the animation side and this guy was trying to learn all of that on his own you know in unreal engine and everything and i was like yeah so impressed by his devotion to learning this stuff you know because he was into writing and he had to put that apart you know and just start learning texturing and we managed to do like a, an entire character creature character which we were very proud of we developed every single aspect of that we presented it in a very encyclopedia format type of thing and i remember at that time i started to get into our station challenges and stuff like that and i was like so 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 motivated by that and again it, it slowly started to fade out it, it faded away and at that time i came up with uh this idea for heaven Orion, which i didn't know it was going to be my first ip you know it was like the first time that i experienced 
this feeling of creating something out of my own heart, my own soul. Because prior to this, uh, that guy was really good at coming up with concepts, with ideas, right? Like he was not drawing, he was not modeling or anything like that. He was a good thinker, a good game director, a good a game designer in that sense, you know? He would really think these things through. And I was like, damn, you know, this guy's so good. I can't come up with my own stuff. He's always helping me, you know? So I developed this, how do you call, what do you call this? Like this imposter syndrome or something like that, you know? Like you're not good enough, you know? You depend on, on, on someone else to come up with stuff, to fix problems, to solve problems. And we worked together on many other projects and I enjoyed it. But I, for some reason, I didn't enjoy working with anyone else. It was not like because it was him or anything like that. I didn't enjoy working with someone on my own projects. You know, because at that time, I, I worked with him on many other projects for other clients on his own projects. But for some reason, I was not comfortable working on my own stuff and having someone at the same level of uh, direction, you know, like um, the same level of authority as I as I did because like this difficult process of democracy where you have to you know agree with each other and I present an idea and you present an idea <clears throat> and I don't agree with you and you don't agree with me so we have to find like a middle ground that doesn't satisfy either of us you know so it's like yeah it was it was <clears throat> not pleasant in that sense and yeah, again, it, it faded away and I, I stated clearly since the beginning and I tried to work with uh, with someone else, with more people, uh, but it didn't work. Like, I just realized that, dude, until I, I need to figure things out first. I need to understand my own project. I think that was my problem, that people wanted to work with me and I was like, but but wait a second guys because i don't even know what this is you know <laughs> like i need to figure this out first i need to understand what i'm creating here and due to the fact that it was such a personal project especially in the beginning it's still personal you know because it's based on my my own uh, vision of the world and stuff and my own life experiences but um i couldn't really communicate that effectively with the the rest of the the team you know and yeah, I just realized that that was like my experience on working with uh, business partners, you know, on that's on that side. But I remember talking to Dan Luvisi about this in um, in light uh, Lightbox in LA, and I, I asked him about this about this, and he said something like, "But there's a clear division there, you know. You work with a business partner partner, and he takes care of the." you know this department on or this field of the project and you take care of that field of the project in my case it was like all over the place and that's why i felt so troubled about that you know like you feel like you have no you're losing the grip of your own project you know so yeah i don't know i think if one day happens you have to be very sure of that and i've heard i think it was also chris doe talking about this he said the same thing like i don't i don't have business partners or something like that you know and i i connected a lot of uh, a lot with that uh reasoning behind his words you know like what he said in that video i can't remember exactly right now exactly the words but yeah i felt very identified with it yeah i had the story that i was telling you about one of my buddies that I was business partners with for a bit. Um, yeah, it didn't turn out so well. We were fresh out of high school and we wanted to work together and try to like find jobs to do. So he got like a couple job offers for both of us. And then he was like, yeah, let's split everything 50-50 and I'll be the negotiator and you just work on the stuff. So, like, <clears throat> during the time that I work on the stuff, I was kind of doing, like, all the, you know, the designing on my own. And he was just... You feel like, like there's an unbalanced kind of thing? and, and... Yeah. Because he, he also... 
can draw too. I mean, not like to the fullest extent of like how much I practice, but he can draw like a little bit and like, you know, solve some problems. But he didn't help me in any of that part while we were doing the jobs. And he was just talking with the client. And then <clears throat> when we went to go present the work to the client, he said like, oh yeah, it took me this much time to do it. So and he, he was taking mention, credit like, for it? Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, at that point, I said, I don't, I don't think we should work anymore. Like after a couple <laughs> years later. Mm -hmm. And he would always like ask me to work with him. He was like, hey, do you want to work on this? Or do you want to work on that? Like, hey, I want you to sculpt something for me or draw like this for this project that I'm working on. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Because <laughs> it always gets to that point where, you know, he would say that he worked on this for this many hours. And yeah. He would never yeah. like mention my name. Imagine he, uh, he pro like, imagine he proposed you to work on on your IPs as well, like on Journey to the East, for instance. What would you say? Like, hey, dude, uh, let's work on this Journey to the East, huh? He would. Okay, let's go. He would take most of the profit, of it. <laughs> or at least most of the the credit for the work. Yeah, I think I, like I just, if yeah, in order for it to work, like you have to be both be very honest, you know like with each other about like well first of, first of all if it's something is disturbing you you know like you have to be friends enough in order to be able to approach it because one of the things that really screws up the relation like business relationships that are also like friend relationships it's like you are afraid of hurting the other people or um confronting them with something that is like problematic with you and like that's the first red flag if you're starting to a business with somebody like um, look at them and try to think if you, if you would be able to to tell them if something's like not right, not sitting right with Dude, you. Dude, you know? thank you so much for saying this because, you know, this experience taught me exactly that. This is what I learned from this, that I've been living my life trying to please other people all the time, you know, always putting them in, in front of me all the time, like uh, going out of my way to kind of satisfy them first and then me right and i realize that they don't really give a crap about you you know like they get what they get from you and then they're fine you know and they they don't realize yeah. how much it took you to deliver that and then you feel like it like you're not getting anything from anyone you know that not everybody thinks the way you think and yeah. that's when you start taking things more like you start focusing on yourself and i think this is what i did this time, you know, I decided to kind of stand for my my own thing, and man, it feels it feels good because it allows you to grow stronger and to help other people in in a much more healthy way, per se. Yeah, yeah, it's healthy because like if you give yourself respect, then they will have no other option than doing it as well. You know, exactly. Like, yeah, if if you just keep uh, accepting the abuse, like what Dom was saying, like. If you kept accepting the guy taking credit for all of his work, there is no other word for it than other than abuse. You know, like the guy's like sitting on top of you and riding to the, the success. Yeah, and, it, and it also it's doing. it's a very good re uh, recipe to develop internal negative kind of thoughts. You know, hidden kind of yeah. uh, sentiments kind and of like, and you get resentful over. Yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And that's never that's good. Nice. Like, I I'm a big supporter of like talking stuff and communicating clearly, right? And I know that can be risky sometimes because you risk offending someone if you say what you think, right? You, you, you always do that. You never know. But I hope that they value your honesty in a way, right? That you could have not said that, but you said it, you know, and, and you, yeah. you're brave enough to, to say it loud and not shut up about it and let it build inside you know as this giant bubble of negative energy that believe it or not man this can you can feel that in the air you know this this kind of energy mm -hmm. that you feel around someone you know yeah. like there's this like kind of you, tension you know it's it's not yeah, good and then like you start to become resentful right uh, yeah. of their behavior and then you don't say anything so it's 
you start to sabotage the the like project or whatever it is that you are mm -hmm. working on because like you gotta have a common goal and you gotta be honest with each other about <clears> things <throat> you know i think that those are the like ingredients per se yeah. of success yeah. and then like you have to assume that you are both working towards the same goal so then like it doesn't become personal when they say something that like they don't don't think it's right it's like look i like you as a person but <laughs> This thing that you are doing is hurting our goal. If you care about our goal, then you will be fine with me saying this, you know. And if and they then, don't like, listen, just cut them off. Yeah. Don't even just walk away. Mm. Which is why, like, it's hard to to work with friends, you know. Like, you have to have a very clear, um, like, discernment of what's like the friend moment where you have a beer on a friday night and then like what's the actual okay now we need to sit down and work you know mm -hmm. i just yeah. want to recommend it anyways <laughs> it's, it's too too much asshole, I feel. and this is how he's turning us down adrian this is how no, this is fine this is not like a, he's about count. to announce that he's leaving like chair like in front of millions of people. <laughs> yeah. Dude, you, you guys get what I'm saying? Millions of yeah, people. Yeah, I get it, bro. It's a it's a very hard thing. I had to deal with a bunch of that recently, like working with friends, and yeah, it's it's a hard one, man. Like mm -hmm. it's easier when you don't care that much about the person, you know. When it's yeah, like no, I mean, working with clients and you're working with friends, I think that's hard. Yeah, it's very and different, it guys. When I, I remember this from Derek Zabrowski, you know, and he said something like, when you work on a client job, you know, you work for someone else, that's a different type of job because you do stuff that you don't really care much about. You know, you can be as passionate as you want about your craft, the, the skills that you're using in that particular job, like painting or 3D modeling or sculpting. But that end result is not for you. You know, it's for someone else to exploit that and make money with it. And you get paid, of course, but it's not yours. Yeah, you made it, but it's not yours. You know what I'm saying? But you, when you work on your own personal stuff, that's where you have all the voice in the world and you have all the, um, you know, the, the, what's the word I'm looking for here? Like the um, authority Rights over, or, yeah. yeah, over every single uh, decision you make, you know, and the end result is for you, <clears throat> you know, you, that's something yeah. that you keep. It's for you. You can experiment with that as much as you want. You, you, you experience that freedom. I feel like it's a very different kind of energy, you know, and that's why uh, sometimes I feel really stiff when working for someone else. Like, I feel like I can't really mess up. Like, uh, I, this is not for me anymore. You know, I can't experiment this much. You know, there's deadlines and there's like tight um, brief, briefs, you know, and uh, specifications about the design and stuff. But I also associate that to a uh, practice kind of issue you know like the more you do that the more comfortable you feel with it and yeah mm -hmm. i don't know <laughs> yeah it doesn't mean that you don't like you don't have to be friendly with a client you know like mm -hmm. you can have the the kind of like expected social behavior absolutely of someone who is decent it's just you, you don't mix up the thing you know like I think it, it's about boundary, only boundaries. Hurt you. Establishing boundaries. Yeah, it can only. Yeah, it will hurt you at the end. Like if you are not comfortable confronting them, because then, like, let's say that circling around, like you come back talking about money, you are not comfortable talking about money because you don't want mm -hmm. to make your friend uncomfortable. Like that's not how it goes, you know. Like, yeah, I, I don't okay, know. So I look at myself when I was younger and dealing with clients. You know, mm -hmm. I, I can. Like it was so naive to think like, oh, they are kind of friends. No, they are not. Like <laughs> nobody's your friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Other than I'm your offended. friends, you know. No, no, dude, dude. I love you. You are, you are way more than a friend to me, Tom. <laughs> We're family. <laughs> We're family. Oh, like the memes Brothers. from Fast and Furious. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't need boom, friends dude. when you have family. <laughs> That just exploded in a matter of days. <laughs> it was all yeah. over the internet. 
Um, uh, but I really do see you guys as like family, dude. It's, yeah. It's, I don't know. Like friendship, we don't, friends like that I have, we don't only talk like once in a while, like once every six months or so. <laughs> but we like stay actually connected almost like every day, I feel. Just nice, you know. Mm hmm. Yeah, what I think really um, makes you differentiate what a real friendship is, is how well we want each other to be, you know, like how happy you are when someone achieves something. Yeah, like that's a really true sign, you know, because so, uh, so, I can't remember when, but I heard something about like, be careful who you tell good news to, because mm -hmm. you don't know, like if everybody is actually wishing you well, you know, and but I find that yeah, so yeah. freaking sad. Like, I'm naturally excited about telling everybody how happy I feel about this thing that just happened to me or this thing that I just achieved, you know? And yeah, yeah when you see Some them people... react, I think it has to do with the way you set up your expectations on their reactions, I think, you know? Because it's like, if I achieve this thing that is relatively impressive, I expect you to be impressed, right? And I let you know about it. And you're like, Oh, it but, <laughs> but it's not <laughs> it's not that impressive you know and you're like man why doesn't they wh why don't they see the wh why don't they see it the way i see it you know and i this comes in relation to what you said about like be careful who you tell your good news to you know because not everybody wants you to be doing well but yeah i don't know i'm just saying that i'm naturally always like inclined towards like just celebrating the good stuff you know and i feel it feels unnatural to me to, to have to shut up about it you know but you, you you usually learn who you can tell it yeah. to you know who you can tell about those things to yeah and i think I that's, think that's just totally comes fine. down to someone's insecurities about uh -huh. how they feel about someone and someone yeah. achieves something they're like Oh, yeah. I wish that was me or like, but they could do the same thing. Like instead of being jealous or, you know, spiteful about that person, they should feel like motivated. Yeah. Like I, I always feel motivated when someone's like achieving something that I don't have. Like I want to get there too. So I'm going to like put in the work to do it. So, I mean, it's... yeah, I feel pretty much the same way. It's like, fuck now he's ahead of me let me like run after him, you know? yeah dude like when i see people <laughs> I need to catch being promoted up, you know? or uh getting a job at a place that i i <laughs> wish i could work at you know i i never feel like oh he doesn't deserve it or oh he i, I wish they fired him got lucky. soon or something yeah, yeah. Well, he was just lucky oh because he has the connections i don't think that way you know i i, I usually go with something like well <laughs> I have a certain circumstance, he has a different circumstance, you know, somehow he's worked his way into that company. Yeah, it was the connections. Yeah, it was the work that he put in. Yeah, maybe he studied in a different way. But dude, there's so many things. You can't just attribute that to luck, you know? It's just not the way it works. When you see someone constantly yeah. winning, you know, it's not because they're lucky. There must be doing something, you know, that favors that. <laughs> that um sometimes it's like growth. how much hard work you put in that brings you more luck you know yeah so th that's it's there's a result saying, right? of your hard work there's yeah. a saying that goes like the the more the harder i work or something like that the, the more i work the luckier, the luckier I, get. I get yeah it's not that he's lucky it's just that that's your perception that oh you're always so lucky you know but yeah, so guys, any kind of advice to people who might be considering or who might be already like in a shared project with some business partner or something like that? I would say out it's, before it's too late. No, I, I would say it's, <laughs> it's important it. to I would say it's important to establish boundaries, you know, like, for instance, if, if yeah. us three would start a project right now, you know, imagine we start. Um, I don't know, a project about a world building, you know, and we come up with this story and we 
we have to establish uh, to establish certain boundaries i would say so the thing is that since we started from scratch at the same time all together right it's important to establish how much we participate in this project right we don't want to go to the place where i do 10 percent of the work and i still get credited as the 33 percent of you know like the project that would be unfair right 90 <laughs> percent. yeah imagine dom dom does the the 60 percent andre does the 30 percent and i do the rest 10 percent right and we all well, i kind of like that offer credited. like let's expand on that but imagine imagine you know we all three are directors writers producers of this this project you know that would be so unfair right because adrian doesn't do as much as dom why is he being credited as the same? That would be kind of unfair. So, <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> I, I guess so. Like now that you mention it, <laughs> I know. I know it's obvious no, now, I, I but it's not so it, obvious uh, in some other projects, you know. And, and they, these things happen out there. It's they, remember they back do. in high school <laughs> when you were said to come up with like um to do ho uh, homework some some kind of uh, work in like a group project or something and then the last time last minute you get that guy that lazy <laughs> kind of student and comes in at the very last minute and is like hey guys can i can you just credit me you know as as if i worked on this you know and it's like okay but what can you do you know and it's like uh, i don't know like i don't have anything to <laughs> To give you guys beautiful. and yeah and you like credit him and and he just gets the same grade as you it's but he didn't do anything <laughs> he didn't do anything so that's that's not cool right and this this happens no this happens in in these kind of settings and that's why i would say make sure you guys um establish those boundaries and communicate communicate yeah. if some of you came yeah. up with the idea beforehand I don't know. There's a lot of stuff that you have to actually take into account when coming up with this equation of what the authorship of, uh, authorship of a project is, right? Because you might be dealing with it at a personal level now because it's like small, no one knows about it, there's no money involved, it's just something we do in our free time. But what if that grows to be something that's that starts selling or something, <clears throat> right? That's like and there's, a trap. Yeah, and there's money involved, and how do you calculate all of that? You have to have something, you know, and that's usually well, the, well wh where all of this is messed. You know, it gets messy because it's like, hey, why are you, why are you getting more? You know, because like, I, I do more than you, right? I don't want that to be us. Yeah, <laughs> well, that, that's what I'm yeah, saying. It's like think... if you don't have that clear beforehand, you, you end up there, mm -hmm. and, and it's you also up. like. Um, it's very common because it's something like that is proved that you always think that you do more than other people, you know, because like you are leaving the things that you do and you don't leave the things that other people do. So you always yeah. have the feeling that you are like putting more. Yeah. So like if you have clear boundaries and clear like responsibilities and then you can like all agree that their responsibilities are of equal importance, then you like don't fall into the own trap of like, oh, I'm doing so much more exactly well, you know. that's what i'm like, saying it, there has to be like an objective way to quantify that has to be right yeah that we Which can all is agree why, like we can come back to the to the idea of like well that's why hours were established as something good to keep in count of you know because like it's the only thing that you can all account for mm -hmm. so like if you have a manager that spend like eight hours a day on the office with you as well you know like yeah, he earns more, but he's also spending eight hours a day. The thing is, like, his eight hours are worth more than yours and that kind of thing. Yeah. It's so, like, yeah. it's a quantifiable way to uh, establish things, right? I, I remember this kind yeah. of, um, I, I call it toxic now because it's, like, so trendy, you know, to say, oh, that's a toxic environment, you know. It, it was like a toxic behavior in a way, I would say where you tend to stay after hours you know um and i i saw the other people doing that and i'm like man now that i work my regular hours i look like i, I don't work enough but i still get paid the same the same amount right 
And I remember one time being called out on that. Like, but we stay here longer. We come here in the morning. We leave in, we live, uh, we leave in the night. And you just go, you know, way before. And I'm like, but I still stay here for like 10 hours, you know, sometimes 12 hours. I can't stay here Holy for six, crap, 16 hours, guys. <laughs> so oh I ended God, up staying there so for... Wrong, dude. I ended up staying there sometimes for like 14, 16 hours, right? So uh, oh, at max, dude, right? That, that's the wrong response for that. The, the good response is like, okay, if you no, don't no, value your time, here's that's the thing. not my problem. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the thing. Be careful with those kind of challenges because, yeah, when you're younger, you know, you don't feel that... Uh, it's not as taxi taxing on your body, you know, but mm -hmm. uh, you f you start to feel that false sense of like I'm superior now. I st I stayed here longer than them, right? So they can't complain anymore about that, right? You're still playing their game. That's not how you should do it. Yeah, you know, just <laughs> you know, do your thing. You know, if you're aware that that's objectively okay, right? You're not messing I mean, anything like, up. And by the way, they, they be aware of the time. That's productivity really of that. Because it's like 16 hours, right? How many hours of those 16 hours do you think you've been actually productive? Because even if, even if I work 10 hours a day, let's say 8 hours a day, right? I'm pretty sure only 4 of those hours at max are like very focused hours. Right. The rest of them might have some in between kind of breaks where you kind of uh, browse the internet, answer some messages, come back to work, you know, quick little breaks. Well, right. It depends on what you consider productive, you know, but like if you talk about a regular work, I would say that like topping, like if you on a really good day, like five or six hours, it's a like actual like pr production. You know? Exactly. So Bro, you can make in, more in because in art we tend to sorry to cut you off but no like no it's okay it's art, okay we we tend to assume that the only part that is productive is when you are actually like painting and that's not the case at all you know like mm -hmm. if you have to take time to ask your art director for a clarification on something those yeah, like or even prepare for the project before minutes, to get gather yeah, references think exactly. through the design you know it's not about those painting like or just sitting minutes. down and painting instantly it's okay exactly. if it takes you, imagine you sit down for an hour, you browse through Pinterest or Tumblr or whatever you use, you know, and then you gather the references and then you start like to sketch for like another hour and you try to find out some nice angle, some nice composition, some nice thumbnails, and then you start painting. It took you two hours to get into that mood, right? Does that mean that you've not been, you haven't been productive? Come on, man! Like you, you could have, you couldn't have done that without that preparation. You know that prior preparation. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, I guess it's a it's understanding what your role is. You know, like you mm -hmm. need to understand that you are not a drawing machine. If you are working like as an artist, you are yeah. offering the value in a multitude like of different ways, and one of them it's the artwork, artwork kind of thing, and mm -hmm. the other side of it is like the design that you provide the time that you spend looking for references the time that you spend like doing anything that can help your goal of providing the value to the client you know so like let's say that you you were talking about the 16 hour day you know on that day you yeah. did not went to the gym you did not like worked out probably yeah so like your your health it's being damaged by the the fact that you're thinking that it will help you out but then if you spend a week doing that i assume that the 16 hours of the next Monday Man, will be like dead. so much less productive because we're yeah. freaking dead on the it's floor. It's impossible you know? to keep up with that yeah. pace. And you have to be aware yeah. that whenever people uh, usually talk about those kind of hours, it's not like they're working those hours nonstop. They take breaks for sure. You know, they take breaks to go to the bathroom, to go have lunch, to go have dinner, you know, uh, more brief kind of breaks to I don't know if they smoke or whatever and then come back you know it's not like they work non-stop but it's it's the way we count them right it makes you feel better and it provides you with the sense of accomplishment that you feel about yourself like I worked for 16 hours today that's so badass you know but when you realize how unproductive that is because the next day you're yeah. 
fucked up, you know. It's like, yeah, you have to um, count yeah, on the long you run. That, you know? yeah. I can understand there's some moments, you know, in our industry where there's a period of time of uh, which they call crunch, right? So that's usually when those tight deadlines approach, there's a release or something. I have to go through that with this company when we were going to promote the game all over, um, well, the country, also outside. That was a nice time to travel and stuff. But when we approached those deadlines, you know, we were staying very, very long hours in the office, you know, from very early in the morning to very late. And it was fine. It was only like a few days right but you kind of understand that's part of it if you don't do it it there's it's not going to work and especially if it's a small company right when it's a bigger company they have thousands of people working and they ask you to do that stuff it's like hey there's a mismanagement issue going on here right <laughs> cuz i'm pretty sure yeah. we can do this without killing ourselves in the but also like in the way. um i think no matter if if it's a big or a small company, they need to like compensate compensate that time, you know, like mm -hmm. it's either paying the extra time and I don't know, like over there, but if you put, if we have extra time in here, you either have to give the person like the same amount of hours as yes. like free time, you know, like giving them a day off or something mm -hmm. or like the extra hours, you have to pay them like double the regular amount. Yeah, but imagine if this is value. us three and we're working on the project and we have a deadline by tomorrow night right it has to go live tomorrow night and it's not done right if we don't do it but like we miss the uh, deadline but are we employed of our company or we are talking about our own personal projects uh we have a common personal project there's no like, even money involved small and company, if, it's a company you know if it is if there is money involved it's our own money that's what i'm saying you know so uh how do you hmm pay those overtime well hours. then you mismatch yourself you're just paying the price you know so like that's where exactly the, that's that's the what i'm saying poor you know, planning comes in. that's what i'm saying there's something that we have to get done by tomorrow night that we haven't taken care of during these days we slacked off on it for the last weeks and we have the release date tomorrow so i guess that's when you roll with it you know you have to do it there's no other way yeah. but yeah, next but time I make sure like, it doesn't happen again yeah, in per on personal projects is a different beast, I think, other than like crunches in the industry as a whole. Because then like personal projects, yeah, you you like you accept a lot more and you assume like No, no, yeah, but it's your personal own project, money. but imagine we have like a Kickstarter or something, you know, and it's like our own money and money we collected from people, right? So it's mm -hmm. like there's only a, as much money. You ha you only have this much money. You can't pay more. Because you don't yeah, have yeah, it. that's like why I'm differentiating, you know, like in that case, mm -hmm. I don't think the, the comment about like, oh, they have to yeah. pay you the time will, yeah, yeah, will yeah. be equivalent. But then if it's, let's say that same case, you know, like, oh, we are having to crunch tonight, yeah. right? I would say like for the three of us to take two days off tomorrow and the day after, you know, like, for sure. Okay, yeah. now we released it, we it can better. breathe. I, exactly. I think it's just like this healthy balance of uh, I've heard cases of people like sleeping on the company for like months, you know, not even seeing their families. Whoa. And, like, it's like going to war. <laughs> yeah. Holy and I'm like, dude, that's if, if you are doing that, something went very wrong in like your yeah. life planning, you know, <laughs> because wow, that's man. not okay. It's insane how, and... I mean, that's the balance we all want to be able to work, to spend time with our family, to have time for any of our leisure activities, you know, whatever hobbies you might have. And yeah, that kind of balance, you know, not to spend, there's a time for that in life. And I would say it's when you're younger, you, you're, you're in your uh, 20s and you have time to, again, to crunch as much as you want, you know, and build up that expertise and stuff. But then you realize there's more to life than that, <laughs> than just working all day, you know. I would say it's just the natural process of growth of a person. You know, you slowly learn about these things as you go. And that's, I don't know, I find that fascinating, you know, especially when you figure that out for your for yourself. But it's nice to see it from other people as well. You know, it's just that it never hits yeah. that hard as when you experience that firsthand. 
So yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so yeah. Um, <laughs> holy shit! It's been two hours, guys. <laughs> yeah. Last thoughts. Um, Last episode. Um, beware of scam Be job offers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's exactly the point i would say like in general be try to be as professional as you can and try to like look for professional clients because they might be hard to get at first but it's worthwhile way more than like those small cheaper clients that you're getting in the beginning usually the experience doesn't even matter that much um from them you know like you are not going to put their name on your resume you're not like doing anything sometimes it's worthwhile more to work on your own personal stuff than to yeah pick a yeah. headache up you know if you can yeah. somehow afford to improve your skills without working on like real projects you know uh because whatever reason i i'm not getting any projects i'm not getting any jobs uh then just focus on your own skills if you can't afford to do that and then slowly build up towards it everything comes i'll i'll tell you that you know everything comes there's always a a place and a time for everything to happen and when you least expect it they hit you with that nice job offer that you can't believe it's it's you who's being asked to do that you know and yeah it's it's um that's what i would say you know just focus on yourself develop your talent and beware of those scam job offers because yeah it's like uh, it, it never happened to us for instance but that doesn't mean that you I mean i mean to me and andrea for instance we never <laughs> <laughs> but that's where we, what we're here for to tell you guys about what happened to dom so you don't fall I for it hit for yeah for these guys so you don't have to could <laughs> it, they they could come they could come in in many other different ways you know maybe it's not lucasfilm maybe it's some other company maybe it's not telegram maybe it's through some other app or something but think about Very inform about it. yeah inform yourself about how do these companies actually proceed when they hiring when they are hiring someone and just compare it to what you are being given as a job offer right see if, if it coincides if it makes sense i don't know most of the time it's like a kind of self intuition but if you're not sure of it feel free to ask any other professional or any other artist that you might look look up to i'm sure they're willing to help with this to clarify oh no it's that's not how they that seems like a scam you know don't 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 do that or you know and by any means, don't give your bank accounts or card number or don't give them money from your own pocket because, come on, guys, the, uh, clients are never going to ask you for money. They, they're here for your drawings, right? So, yeah. 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 I would like to kind of set off the, <laughs> the, the outro, but you see when I change back to the scene, something went wrong with Dom fell you know <laughs> earlier in the, the episode uh, and every time i switch back it's like this black screen i don't see anything so oh it's actually on, okay you my screwed bad, my up bad. for all of us no 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 no, no. that's come on okay. adrian you screwed up for all of us <laughs> oh man it doesn't matter <laughs> come on andre that was, that was my bad <laughs> um okay so I'll just do the song now. So yeah, this is the end of the episode, but I'm, we're glad you guys enjoyed it. And we hope you got some value from this, something that might be helpful, interesting. If you found it entertaining, just let us know in the comment section. Make sure you follow us on Instagram. <clears throat> we made, again, as I said in the beginning, we made a, an Instagram account for Lightshare that we're gonna leave in the comments down below. And yeah, if you guys want to say something before we leave, this is the moment. Well, I appreciate all the support and all the patience from everybody. And the, the two of you, thank you very much as always. Yeah, and whoever stuck around since the beginning, thank you as well for supporting us throughout this journey. Yeah, we'll come out with more content soon. Absolutely. 
All right, then. Um, thank you, everybody. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your support. Make sure you stay creative, take care of yourselves, and we hope to see you in the next episode. Bye-bye, guys.